So yeah, that's that's it. We started. Go ahead. All right, head to Pu family. This is Reki Kajara, the high priestess of the Raseki Arts Temple. I am here with my partner, the wellness and fitness guru. <laughs> I like that title. That's Educator title. extraordinaire. And we are here. I'm a start. I'm sorry. Let's hey. get that part out. I'm a start. That's me. I'm a start. Is you. That's what I go by now. <laughs> We are here to share with you all today some great information about copper and copper deficiency and why it's so important for us to know about copper and how it affects us. And I will just start by saying copper is a mineral that we all have within us. It is um, very common and prominent here on this side of the world in the Americas, um, the red dirt speaks of the copper that's in the dirt. Copper is associated with the planet Venus. It has a feminine energy and is good for us in many ways, both internally and externally. And when we have our copper deficiencies, it can cause us to have many problems. And we're going to hear more about the deficiencies <laughs> from Amistad. Oh, okay. Is it my turn? It's your turn. All right. So we have got copper deficiency. Um, I guess it's a, this particular mineral is dear to me. Um, I didn't know much about minerals until uh, I started to do some research about a year ago. Um, and I'm so glad that I did because what I discovered is that many of our ailments and diseases all come from mineral deficiencies. Um, also in combination with certain vitamin deficiencies, you know, so in just learning that, you know, the way that we've been treating disease, um, somebody said hello, hey, sacred aspirant Walker, all right, um, in learning how we, um, in dealing with, the way we deal with disease today, you know, is really unlike the way the ancestors would deal with disease. Mm -hmm. um, uh, most of our diseases come because we are really out of order. Uh, we are in great dishonor uh, of the way that our ancestors used to eat. We are in great dishonor of our culture, uh, just in the way that we would provide well, for our families and uh, how we commune with the earth, yes. how we commune with, uh, with air, fire, and water. You know, mm -hmm. and because now we have this vile teaching that's been given to us and it's been given to us at such an early age, we think that is the true teaching. And we go about our day doing things according to the standards of those who are in power. All right. But in, uh, in just researching, what I've learned is, you know, the way our body is uh, composed, uh, the way our body, you know, functions is not the same as it functions. Uh, for those that are in power, you know, the Caucasian um, uh, hemocrit levels are different, their bone density is different, you know, how we mature, uh, the maturation of our bodies is different. A lot of things are different, but we, we are just being held to this one standard, and therefore it's going to mess us up when we decide to go and uh, get like a uh, like some kind of exam right. and then they say well you know everything is out of order for you you know you're sick but you you may not be sick because it's normal for you exactly. to have these particular levels and being that we don't even know about it is a problem right. you know so uh in just doing my research i also discovered that you know most of the diseases that we have i'm um, practically every disease that we have it comes from the fact that we're deficient in certain minerals mm -hmm. okay so copper is what we're going to talk about today now what 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 are the symptoms or the signs of copper deficiency you, you could come up you know any yes like what <laughs> i'm going to speak about the hair oh my, my the gray <laughs> the gray, the gray beard okay <laughs> the gray beard i started getting gray wrong when i was 35 36 years old and um, I, I was told that was because I was wise. That's the wisdom, you know. But that's a lie. That is a straight up lie. It, have, it doesn't have anything to do with wisdom. Um, what it has to do with, though, is that the, the melanocytes, they're no longer producing the melanin that's required for it to, con to give the black texture, the, black, the blackness that comes from my hair. It, it's no longer producing the melanin to do that. And mm -hmm. so 
there's something that's missing. There's some raw materials that are missing in, in, in which in, for the reason why I'm not being able to produce that. Now, I didn't know that. Like I said, I thought I was just, it was just a wisdom thing as the, you know, the older folks may have told us. Yeah. And a um, couple of years go by and I, I started to get another issue. You know, the other issue became was hemorrhoids. Mm -hmm. So I, when I, when that issue occurred, you know, it wasn't as bad in the beginning, but as time went on, a couple of years went by, it was really aggressive to the point where now I have blood in the toilet bowl every time I use the toilet. Mm -hmm. And that's when it became really scary. And so uh, I no longer wanted to use a toilet. I mean, there'd be times when I have to use a toilet and I just wouldn't do it, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm like, listen, just, just yesterday, I had a, I had a, I had blood flow like I had a menstrual period. I'm like, you know, that's a lot of blood coming out. I mean, I don't know how much blood you guys lose in your menstrual period, so I'm gonna take that back, you know. Mm -hmm. But I do know that, you know, it was scary for me because that's not a normal thing for a man to, to be spitting on blood, yes. you know, in that intensity. And um, I, I went to the doctor because that's what I was taught to do, you know, that's what we was taught to do. So. And going to the doctor and waiting in the waiting for the doctor for for two to three hours, and finally seeing this this young Caucasian gentleman standing in front of me, with a with a I don't know shrug about what's going on. I really don't know why you're bleeding so intensely, sir. I don't know what's wrong, but I'm gonna give you an aggressive laxative, a laxative, and uh, this is your prescription. And I'm going me feeling completely defeated uh, because. You know, this man really doesn't know how to help. Right. You know, he has no idea. He hasn't been trained, you know, in um, in taking care of people that's highly melanated. He hasn't been trained, you know, and, and I don't know if he cared or not, you know. Right. And so he didn't care because he told me to take a, an laxative. So, I, which, which made it worse. Not, yes. Yeah, that made it worse. Sure. So, um, the copper, the copper became... You know, the, I figured out just recently, not too long ago, maybe about a couple months, three to four months ago, that it was a copper deficiency. Because copper, not only is it responsible for, for uh, melanin production throughout your body, it's also responsible for uh, the elasticity of major and minor blood vessels. Mm -hmm. You know, it's responsible for the capillaries, the capillaries that, that are in my anus, mm -hmm. you know, those things, you know, as pressure was building up, they would burst, mm -hmm. you know, and then of course there'll be blood. Yes. Um, also, if you don't, if you're copper deficient, you know, you, you open for a stroke, you mm -hmm. know, because a stroke or an aneurysm, you know, which is just, uh, it could be a blockage or a rupturing of the blood vessels. So you'd have a blood clot that would generate in your in your head and that would be an aneurysm you can have it could be in your abdomen it could be in your heart different places of your body you know can uh you can experience these things and i know many of us out there have relatives or friends or families that have suffered or died from an aneurysm yes. you understand mm -hmm. and uh, we just you know being that we didn't know because we're going to the doctor who is all about allopathic medicine and not about you know a holistic treatment of the body as one you know, they're telling us this is what they could, this is what they're going to do for us, but it doesn't help us. They're just really treating the symptoms, though. They're not really trying to cure people. So, mm -hmm. so uh, being that we're so out of disorder, dishonor, you know, that we got to come back into into being and you know honoring our ancestors and honoring the ways uh, that we had in the past. So the first thing that we got to do is figure out what are those ways, you know. Yes. So that's why we're doing this research about minerals and vitamins and, you know, um, amino acids and because I know we're calling them these fancy names, but really it's just, you know, simply what your body gets from the earth, what it gets from the sun, which is fire, what it gets from the water, mm -hmm. you know, and what it gets from the, what's the other one I'm missing? The air. Okay. And these four elements, you know, is what we are composed of. We breathe in the air, you know, you get nitrogen and oxygen from that, yes. you know, you eat the food and you get trace minerals and also major minerals from doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, the fire is where you can get your vitamins from. Vitamin D comes from the fire. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of different vitamins 
are, are generated in foods because of photosynthesis, you know? And so in this process, we got to make sure we go back to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So copper deficiency we covered is aneurysms, uh, gray hair is a sign of copper deficiency, uh, wrinkly skin, wrinkling wrinkles in your skin, mm -hmm. the sagging of a uh, woman's breast is a copper deficiency or the sagging of your skin is a copper deficiency. Um, hemorrhoids right. also is a copper deficiency. Okay. Now what kind of foods, you know, have copper in? Now the only issue I have with, with giving you guys a list of foods is, is, is this. The food, the only way the food can have the mineral in it is if it's planted in soil that has the minerals in it. Right. Okay. Now, why wouldn't the minerals be there? Well, the way that, you know, we do agriculture today, and I, I was supposed to look up what agri mean because it seemed like it's something against culture. Mm. That's why I wanted to look up what agri mean, you know what I'm saying? Like when you, when you, like it's something that's like, aggregate something is like it bothers okay, it yeah. so i wanted to look it up and see what agree the, that root meant you know origin of that root because our culture has been has been messed up you know and these guys they they take an area and they plant corn and they plant these vegetables in the area and they keep using the soil keep using the soil and they're only putting in three minerals as fertilizer mm -hmm. that's called npk nitrogen phosphorus and potassium that's okay. all they're putting in the soil they're not putting all 90 essential nutrients in the soil they're not putting 102 trace minerals in there i mean mm -hmm. they're not doing that okay they're not replenishing the soil so the question i was asking well how was the soil naturally being replenished before we started to do agriculture well it was flooding right. flooding occurred you know if you if you if, if the if the soil was flooded it would bring minerals from the glaciers because the rivers were flooded or they could bring it from the ocean because the rivers were flooded. See, and the rivers would flood and there would be soup that would be that would be deposited and then that soot and the water would, you know, recede and you know be absorbed and the soot would just settle and then whatever was deposited would be in the soil. Right. Another way old people used to put minerals back in the soil is when we uh before we had the the incandescent lamps, you know, that was invented by Edison. Supposedly it was invented by Edison, but I don't even think he invented that. <laughs> but um uh, these incandescent lamps, you know, before they came, we had to burn wood, That's what I was you know, say. in the fire, right? So uh, what, what would they do with the ashes? Well, they would use the ashes to sprinkle on the dirt and mix them in the dirt. They would mix the ashes in the dirt. See, the, it's not, they weren't really ashes. Those were minerals. Yeah, exactly. So they took those minerals and they would put it back in their gardens and uh they would just they yeah they would yes. and, the, and that would that would be a replenishment of the minerals and therefore when you eat the food that grew in the garden you would get the minerals in your body again and then you stay healthy right you know this is all about giving your body what it needs because your the, the body heals itself no one if does the healing the right if it has the right has raw the materials yes your body is going to heal you know but if you don't give it the right raw materials what is it going to do but just stand there and look at you and be like, well, you're going to give me what I need for me to give you what you need. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we put the right um, minerals back in the soil. So that is one. That's 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 these are the things that I'm an advocate of. I'm an advocate of uh, planning, uh, planning your own foods and providing the minerals because I can get I, I know where to find the minerals to put back in your garden if you wanted to have your own garden. And two, I, I also am an advocate of supplementation, yes. you know, with, with plant-based minerals because you need it to be uh, plant-based because that's the way you absorb it. It's not about, because I've learned that it's not what you eat, it's what you absorb. Yes. You know, you can't absorb rocks. I can't send you down to the rock mine and have you chewing a, chewing a quartz and expect for you to get the minerals from the quartz. <laughs> it's not going to work. You know, you're going to be, you're going to have a bad time in the restroom. But you ain't gonna have no minerals in your body, you know. So, uh, what else we need to cover? The foods that have copper, copper are dried nuts and seeds, dried fruits as well. And you will find that most minerals can be found in the dried nuts, seeds, beans, dried fruits, and things like that. 
and there may be a few other things but i also wanted to add that people also use copper people who have arthritis and suffer with arthritis pain also wear copper to help relieve the pain and the symptoms that they're feeling from arthritis because the copper is an energy conduit it can help energy to flow and we have blockages and that's why arthritis happens in certain areas because the energy gets stagnant and gets blocked so when we wear copper bracelets it helps the energy to flow through us we have so many nerves going through our hands um, it could be very helpful that way externally as well wearing copper jewelry you can absorb it when it's on your skin so that is another way we can get our copper okay okay little trace yes. yes so nuts dried beans whole cereal grains dried fruits and they say as shellfish uh, and made our major sources of copper and um but remember what what i was saying is that if it's not in the soil it's just not going to be in your foods as well mm -hmm. and that is a big issue and um for for the way we do agriculture here in america and other places as well we just need to grow our own food yeah. we can and that way we could be in control or have more control because even the seeds we get <laughs> and so for right now what we need to do is we need to make sure we have proper supplementation yes okay so Proper supplementation is going to help you to move towards living a very healthy lifestyle. I want us to be able to live to 120. Mm -hmm. And so for us to be able to do that, we have to make sure we give our body exactly what it needs. And that's uh, the essential nutrients, essential vitamins, vitamins and, and minerals, and, minerals yes. and amino acids. So so that'll be our copper video for the day, right? All right. Give me a high five on that one in the bam. All right, we gotta, uh, you got to do that thing what you do with the head. Okay, so we thank you all for joining us. And we will come again with more videos. Make sure to visit us online at RosekiHealing.com, on Instagram. And on my, uh, you can see me, me, get me a, see me on Facebook at Warren Amistad Carter, which is where you guys are at right now. On YouTube at Melanated Wellness. And on Instagram at Free Amistad. All right, family. Until the next time. Head to poo. Poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> That's it right there. Poo poo that like that part. You know, for you know. That's the poo. And then we're going to go over here.